So this protein assay that we're going to talk about today actually has a very difficult to pronounce name. It's called the bisinconinic acid assay. This name is so hard to say that most people just say BCA. Let's go with that. The BCA assay is based on a very well-known chemistry reaction where copper is reduced by proteins in an alkaline medium. Once copper is reduced, it chelates BCA, creating the purplish-bluish color of this assay. It's interesting that this reaction between copper and proteins in an alkaline medium, it's called a biuret reaction because there's no biuret involved in it. So why does it even have that name? Because this test is commonly used to detect biuret as a contaminant in urea-based fertilizers. So what happens after the biorat reaction is done? Well, one cuprous cation interacts with two BCA molecules that get chelated, and that forms a water-soluble complex that is violet to the naked eye. This complex also has an absorbance peak at 562 nanometers, which is what allows us to use that to estimate the protein concentration in any given sample with the aid of a spectrophotometer and a standard curve. Talking about standard curve, it's important to know that the protein content of your sample can influence the biorat reaction. Not only the peptide bonds take part in the biorat reaction, but also cysteine, cysteine, tryptophan, and tyrosine are also direct components of that reaction. So remember to always keep in mind protein structure and buffer composition when you're thinking about your BCA assay. Also remember that this assay is extremely sensitive to the presence of any copper chelators, such as EDTA, as well as the presence of any reducent agents, such as DTT. If you need more information on that, please refer to the other Lambda U courses. One of the big differences in deciding to run your assay in microplates or cuvettes is the volume of sample that you're going to need. So if you're going to run that assay on plates, you're going to need 25 microliters of sample per well, whereas if you decide to run it on cuvettes, you're going to need 50 microliters of sample per cuvette. Now keep in mind that does not account for the triplicates. As we have discussed, this assay, just like all the other protein assays, have intrinsic variability to it depending on the macromolecular structure of your protein. The number of peptide bonds, as well as the amino acid composition, is going to influence the rate of the biuret reaction. Now, despite the fact that BCA is not an endpoint assay, which means that biuret reaction never truly stops, it's still considered the most accurate of the conventional protein assays. It also has a broad dynamic range from 20 to 20,000 micrograms per milliliter. It has a fair sensitivity, as you can see, being able to detect as low as 20 micrograms per milliliter. This assay is fairly quick to prepare since you don't have a lot of intermediate steps or incubation points, which allows it to be a high-throughput assay. However, it is a little bit on the expensive side.